Hey! Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. So today, we're going to have a conversation that I am very curious to have with an expert, an expert psychic in the afterlife. We're going to actually talk with Sylvia Brown. Whether or not you're a fan does not matter. In the afterlife, remember, there is evolution. Spirits transcend and ascend and have this great energy of insight. So knowing that, as a psychic myself, I would love to talk with someone who knows their stuff, and she does. So we're going to have a conversation with her specifically. I have questions about psychic intervention. And when is it okay to do things like remote viewing and doing energetic work on others' behalf. So some of this stuff, I know, is tricky. And there are different values around this. So as a psychic myself, I have very strong ethics and um, boundaries and as well. So you would know this is why I don't do private channeling I don't do private psychic readings to meet celebrities because I have some boundaries about that because what is the purpose? Like, what is it? How is it going to serve you? Is it just a curiosity thing? Is it just a, I'm going to redirect all of the problems I have into this one person and I have to know about them so that I'm not focused on my life when the reality is, is I need to focus on my life? Like, is it a distraction? And... Like, how is it serving you kind of a thing, right? So that's why I don't do that. I'm like, I do that publicly because there's lots of good messages, like will be today in this video. So just for example, so I have very strong ethics and, and opinions and views about this myself, the psychic intervention piece. So I thought, let's talk to, let's talk to Sylvia Brown and ask her. So come on in, Sylvia. She has such a, yeah, my voice is a little rough today. I have a little bit of a cold, a sinus thing. That's all it is, people. A sinusy thing. I know that for a fact, so I'm good. But I always think about that because um, when I hear Sylvia's voice, even metaphysically, it's a little rough, a little gravelly, I would say. So let's talk about from your afterlife wisdom, because now you're in the afterlife. And I know some people, especially fans, might say, oh, that doesn't sound like Sylvia Brown. She would never say that. So we're going to ask your fans to stretch their minds and understand that in the afterlife, the evolution of spirit is limitless. And so her, our conversation will include her afterlife perspective, which is what you want. We want that. That's why we talk to dead people, because they have insight that's different. They can look back on the human life and go, oh, do this, this, and this, you guys. Come on. This is where the meat is. This is where the real good stuff is. This is where the caramel center is. So, Sylvia, let's talk about energy and psychic intervention. I have, I know there's a lot of different terms. There's terms like astral travel, astral projection, and remote viewing. Let's kind of talk about some of these things and actually share your insight and then I will try to really be clear on my biases as well. Because I think people will pick up on it. They'll probably feel my energy. And it might be different than what you share. And so remember, I'm a human person. So I do have my own biases. And so the energy, just click into hers. If that's what you're interested in and really attaching to as far as understanding this. Okay, And it's getting really warm in here all of a sudden. I'm feeling really warm. So yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Energy shifting up. Talk to me about remote viewing. How do you perceive this concept of, she says, oh, oh, no, 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 no. We need to, uh, we need to start at the basics, she says. Let's talk about um, the, the real question is about where are the lines? And when you consciously cross the lines with someone else's energy, with your own energy. She says, you have autonomy. You have complete control over your energy. It doesn't, I know, it doesn't feel like that. I know that there's other entities and energies, earthbound or 
pockets of energies imprints that you could be affected by. You could feel the ripples of, but it's just like a, a bumpy road. Like she's showing me, it's just the bumps on the road. It's not a part of who you are when you feel those things. And she says, so you understand your own energy. When it becomes a problem is when you are in relationship with other people and you want to know something that you don't have access to or to, and, and she says, and it doesn't, I'm not suggesting nefarious um, intentions. She says, I'm not saying it's malicious, like to control someone else. We're just going to assume, she's like, she's honoring me. Thank you, my dear, that's lovely. She said, we're going to uh, always, we're going to assume good intention, right? So. The example would be, and she's using an example for me, she's like, you're, like your, your child at college, if they're stressing out about something, a class, a test, a paper, for example, you might want to slip in there and slip into their energy and give them an energetic boost. So this is no different than the concept of praying for someone, she says. Prayers are just energy that's sent out into the universe for someone else. However, any way that you're sending energy or you're trying to go to someone's energy and, and touch it or intervene or interject, even if it's good, you are interfering with the energy of that person as it is, as it is formed, as it is in a process, as it is discovering and experience life. So in many ways, this is going to be a difficult, is going to be a difficult um, she says decision. She just literally said it's a difficult decision to make. She's acknowledging it's a, it's a difficult, it's a hard decision, especially with like your kids, people you really care about and you want to intervene on their behalf or go mess with their energy. And she's saying it's a difficult decision. She says you can by proxy request, you can request through prayer assistance for that person. And when you do that, when you request assistance for that person or you choose to picture that person with an amplification of support, that's different than going in to someone's field and messing with all the different, the details, I can't say intricate, intricate, I can never say that you guys, I'm gonna replace what she's saying. The details, the minute details of their unique grid based upon the circumstance or situation they're dealing with and changing it. Like, oh, they feel stressed, so I wanna take their stress away. She says, that's not serving them or you because it creates, your focus on their stress creates focus on your own stress. You redirect, you're very right. She says, you're very right, you are right. We redirect as human beings. She says, when you're in a human body, you can't help but be attached or attracted to the mass of something. And when you feel that anxious energy or that worry specifically or concern specifically, it rallies people, it draws people like a magnet. And then that's what amplifies. So don't send, don't connect to energy that you don't want to get bigger or focus on the problem. Okay, so is it bad to send prayers? Is it bad to surround someone with a bubble of light? And she's like, no, that's not, ex that's not specifically what we are communicating. And she's showing me Francine. She has a guide named Francine, I think. Um, she and Francine are together. They're like connected. They're almost like one, the same person, kind of. It's interesting. That's interesting. I don't know much about her. I know that she had a spirit guide named Francine. I don't know much about Francine. I know that she has this long braid. That's how I see her anyway. It's a big long braid. But the two of them are very close. They're like kindred spirits or twin flames or they're like very close. So when she says we, that's what she's referring to, I think, is that the sides of her that are that, that she had access to in human life. Oh, thank you. She's showing me that because you have access to that. You have a spirit guide. The people that you're inquiring about have spirit guides. People, when you step in, good intention, well-meaning, you are assuming a deficiency in the other, in that person to not be able to manage, oh my gosh, she literally just swore, oh my gosh, to manage their shh stuff, we're gonna say. <laughs> I like you and I do wanna start. 
I should just start swearing because that's really how I kind of am, just so you guys know. <laughs> this is all professional here. Even though I'm wearing a hoodie, don't let the hoodie and the tie-dye shirt fool you. We're professional here. You are assuming or presuming that they can't handle their sh stuff. And so you have to do that for them. Because why? Because you're such an expert at handling your stuff. She's like, because you're the expert? Because you're the expert of somebody else? Because you're so good at living your own life? Like she's literally like, oh, go, oh, yes. Loving it. Oh my gosh, I'm way too warm right now. I'm so gonna take off my hoodie. Woo! Yeah, Sylvia, lay it down for us. Break it down. So let's recap. Is it okay to pray for people and surround them with light? Yes. She says yes. But do it in the right way. There is a correct way. Do it from a place of, and then she literally uses, this is interesting. So it matches the term grace, but it almost feels like forgiveness. Do it from a place of forgiveness within yourself for first acknowledging that that person can't handle their stuff because what you need to amplify is that they can. That's what she's basically telling us here. So come from a place of grace in yourself and forgiveness in yourself for thinking less of them and then flip it. She's kind of like, flip it. Like your intention matters. The way when you, like, she, okay, so analogy. She's showing me like the energy of water. Do you want to drink from water that's dirty and gross and potentially toxic? Or do you want to dr drink from a spring that is pure and beautiful and pristine? Yeah, that's energy. Choose your water wisely. Choose the resources where you're resourcing the energy from wisely. And you can use proxy. So I tell people this all the time that they can use proxy. So you ask their higher self, ask their spirit guides, ask an archangel. Michael's great at this protection. Archangel Hanel's great at this love. There's lots of spirit guides that can help you to serve or provide the energy through the prayer, through the projection of healing love or healing light or healing energy to that other person. And they can deliver it in a way at a time that is best for them. So it's kind of like when someone gets sick or has some kind of something happen and all the neighbors and the families and the church and whatever make a bunch of food for them. Cause you know, meals is stressful and all that. So they bring a bunch of food over. So you can't eat all the meals at once, right? Cause you would be sick and it would be ridiculous. So instead of all at once, everything coming at somebody, you use the spirit guides, the healing team, the higher self of the person to Bring the meal each day. So it's like a long-term kind of sustainability. So let it filter through their higher self. And when you are sending energy or projecting energy onto someone, it can feel very overwhelming. I know this for myself because it happens for me. So if somebody thinks I'm sick, they'll start sending me energy. Don't do that because I will deflect it because that's what happens. Like it's too much. So I manage my own energy so it doesn't offend people if they send me energy but we just put it over to the side so that if I need it or when I need it, I can grab it, that kind of thing. Like I resource it that way. So you can also protect yourself from unwanted excess energy too. Because as an empath, it's so overwhelming just having 50 people send you light. Really? Because I'm not light? You really think I'm not light just because I have a little cold? I'm not light? No, no, that's not how it works. I'm still connected. I'm just working on other things and feeling my body and that kind of thing. Just because I'm not here doesn't mean I'm not here and present in my life, right? So same thing. Yes, very good. Now that is some good teaching, Miss Sylvia Brown. All right, so energy, talk to us about though this energy. Okay, so psychic intervention or interference, maybe interference is a thing. That's maybe more focused, oops, that's maybe more focused on what we're chatting about. So talk to me specifically about remote viewing. Can you talk about that? Like looking in clairvoyantly and seeing into somebody else's business. Can you talk to us about like the rules or parameters, boundaries on that? And how is, when is that useful and when is it not? Oh, she says, oh, remote viewing can be very helpful. It can be very, very useful, very useful. So how so, how, cause she's showing me crime scenes. Like she said, I've used it to see a crime scene to find um, the bad guys is kind of the air quotes kind of thing. And other psychics and other mediums use it as well because that's how you, she says, that's how you can access 
the um, the like the photographic kind of images and the storyline for a movie that you've never seen or been in. So she says you can do use remote viewing, and she says it. The, the part where it gets tricky, she says, is it's a, the ti it's a timeline thing. So are you doing it now to take a look at your spouse to see what they're doing? Are they actually at work? Are they, who are they having lunch with? That kind of thing. If you're doing that, then there's a whole host of uh, potential karmic ramifications, is what she says. Karma? Yeah, I know. It's a karma thing, right? Like... What's really happening is there's not trust in the relationship. Somebody's not happy. Somebody's feeling suspicious or afraid or less than. And what they really need to do is have conversation and not use psychic work as the, the private detective. She's like, because you're not going to get, and she says, okay, because you're not going to get accurate information. It's not going to be accurate. What you think you, if you're trying to remote view, you're only going to see part of it. It will be distorted by your fear, she says. It will be distorted by your fear. So if you're trying to do remote viewing for a personal thing that you should really be having conversation or communication about, your view will be distorted and your fears will be amplified, is what she says. So it's like you're looking for something. You're looking for something specific. You're not really coming in pure like the pure, the good, pristine water. You're not coming impure to the situation or circumstance just to see something or get some kind of information that's going to be helpful, useful. You're getting some information to see if you can believe what you, what you think, what your mind is telling you. And, and it doesn't, she's like, it doesn't work like that. There's discord. It disrupts the field and it's not accurate. It's like looking through the muddy water, the waters are muddy. She says the waters are muddy, so it's not, it's not accurate. It's not gonna reflect back at you accurately, it's gonna reflect back at you fears. So you, for example, might see your husband having lunch with a coworker and it seems intimate because it's what, a nice restaurant, they might be having a glass of wine. They're not sitting across from each other. They're sitting side by side, but maybe they're working on something. Maybe other stuff is going on here. Maybe there's actually another person at the table, but you're so focused on these two and what you think you're seeing that you can't even understand the dynamics, okay? So you can't be accurate in that situation, okay? So just talk to the person. Make it human, you know? And so, okay, so, so. All right, so remote viewing can be helpful in certain situations or circumstances, but not that, like the interpersonal relationship. When you have a personal relationship with someone, just talk to them, basically, right? Okay. All right, so, oh, and she says remote viewing can help you discover or find something that you've lost or it's been lost, she said. So, like, you're going through grandma's papers, and you're looking for a specific deed to something, like a car or whatever, and you don't know where it's at. You can use remote viewing to see that. Um, I personally also have actually used remote viewing to find things for my kids. And they'll call me and they call it my hippie powers. My kids will actually call me and say, Mom, I lost my keys or I can't find my lanyard. Can you use your hippie powers and <laughs> find it or tell me? And then at that, case, that time, I can look at the place with my clairvoyance. So remote viewing is about clairvoyant connection. I can look at it and I can see what the surroundings are. That's how I see it. That's probably why it works really well in like um, with a lot finding lost things or in crime scenes because you can look and see the surroundings and like find the body or find the item that's lost, that kind of thing. I think that that's helpful, yeah. And she says, but it's not 100% accurate. You have to understand because everything, she's saying everything is dynamic and it's ever changing. And there's some cues or clues you can see like, what do the trees look like? I mean, what is the weather? What is the climate? Um, what is the terrain? What is the background? You can see some of those things, like what is the time of day? Is there sun out? Is it dark? Well, that kind of thing. Can you, you know, can you pick up on, it's not just clairvoyance, but it's also like you can tap into other resources, like you can hear, can you hear water? Um, you know, that kind of thing. There's different or do you hear a highway, or do you feel like the, the ground shaking because there's a train nearby? Or There's all these sensory things that you can use during remote viewing, not just third eye, I should say that. I gave an example of third eye, but... Because I think remote viewing, most people think it's with your vision, right? That's why it's called viewing. But you can use all your senses, right? A absolutely. She says that will make things more accurate. 
as long as you're pure, she says, when you step in. And she says, when you have a stake in the outcome or what you discover, when you genuinely care about what the outcome is or what, what's going to happen, it distorts the, the picture, the image. So it's, it's not easy. It's not easy to do that. So can we use remote viewing for something positive, like to go on a, like to revisit a vacation site or go to a place maybe that we've never even been before? Like, I would love to go to Italy. I, I just would. Or like the Mediterranean or, I mean, just, oh, beautiful, you know? She says, yes, you can absolutely use it for that. You could absolutely use it for that. She says, you would use more of a meditation style kind of guided imagery to do that. But yes, she said, that's a very common way that most people probably do slip into remote viewing without really acknowledging it. But you can then, she said, yeah, use the senses. You can use it for good. She says, it's not all negative, bad. I gotta bust somebody or we gotta find the bad guy. It's not all about that. Or having to know the outcome or end result because you you have a say in that outcome or end result can you talk to us about astral travel because i do have clients that i work with and people that i know that use astral travel like to literally leave the physical body the physical world reality realms and then go other places such as the galactic, the starseed energies. A lot of starseeds, I think, do leave their bodies and, and do that kind of thing. And I'm like, you guys need to understand re-entry. You need to understand the power of the connection with your physical body. Like, the see, this is my bias. I'm like, don't leave your effing body. If you want to do psychic work and you want things to be so much better for you, you need to work in the house you've been, you, you, you built, okay? Work with the house you built. Don't escape because when you come back, guess what? Still the same house. Okay, that's a PSA, you're welcome. Little rant, <laughs> psychic rant by Bridget. <laughs> okay, talk to us about this though. She says, yes, you're correct. It's, it's mostly a galactic thing, she says. And, and all of the star energy, she says, it's so appealing right now. It's so attractive at the time you're living through. She says, starting in, she's saying September 2020, there's been an increase in, in the frequencies related to the star um, planets and so many people are misinterpreting and misunderstanding what that actually means it's more so for and I know I know this I'm gonna interject healing right it's a healing thing there's way new technologies for healing there's more communication for healing within us and with each other and all that and it is coming from other places in support of us you guys by the way in support not to control you to support you hello okay Access what you already have, because it's part of your lineage, your ancestral energy, your DNA makeup. Mm -hmm. Might be star stuff, just so you know. Okay. So, another PSA by Bridget. Okay, so interesting. They're gonna find out so much about me in this video, I can't handle it. All right. So the star stuff, the yes, healing energy is amplified because of, so you said starting in, from September 2020, that's interesting. Oh, but the election was in November, so maybe that's why, amplification. And she says it can be very, she says it can be kind of chaotic. She says the star energy for the healing stuff, the amplification of the frequencies, she says the, the frequencies can feel chaotic. It feels kind of shaky. She says jitters, you know, like when you have too much coffee. <laughs> jitters, you get the jitters. She said that's kind of what's happening. So a lot of the empaths, as you would say, you would call them empaths. We, we don't necessarily use like the terms like that, she says there. Everyone is heart-based. Everyone has that heart intuition and connection. And that's how everybody really, that's how you get all your inf intel, even though you don't know that. That's what she's showing me. I'm like, I know that. It's like Grand Central Station at this heart chakra. Oh, yes, even if you don't know that, as this is what's happening. And she says that that's the, um, that's the place where you need it most. You need that awareness and recognition. People are calling it self-love or more self-care, and really it's about... Um, letting this kind of what feels like, she says, chaotic or disruptive energy kind of settle inside you. Let it just settle. Let it settle in. And then it will kind of, she's like, kind of melts in, you know, like you're stirring your, your um, hot chocolate in your mug and she's like, it's all powdery kind of thing. You just you let it kind of stir it in and let it kind of get settled in and then you can drink it. So this energy is still coming through. And she says, this October, there's a new boost. She said, there's another 
like a booster of that energy, that same kind of healing that started in September of 2020. And it's, it's um, she says it's here to maintain, to create kind of a plateau because now it's all stirred up or whatever and that needs to be kind of calm on the surface. So it's kind of coming to kind of create like a calm on the surface of things. So it's not a cover, she's very clear. It's not a cover, it's like a calm on the surface. So she says the astral traveling is something that's I think a tendency, she says, for people to get those energies and then to experience them and embody them and then to bring them back into the human form is where there's conflict. She said it's hard to do that unless the body is ready to assimilate those energies. And in many cases, it's not, she says. Um, you, you must have really specific physical practices in order to integrate the metaphysical energy that's showing up now, she says, on the planet. Because Earth is not equipped, she says, to manage this level of high vibrational energy, which is why you've heard talk of new earth and, and how dimensions are shifting and that kind of a thing, she says. But don't make, don't make it literal, she said. Don't make it literal. You know, if you feel, if you let it be emotional and let it be um, a, a metaphysical understanding, it, it's, it's not going to make you crazy, she said. But, but yeah, if you're edgy, if you're more sensitive, and she's like, especially like your, your body, your skin, to the temperature, to... Um, things that you didn't necessarily bother you before. This just means that that energy is trying to, um, it is present for you if you want to accept that as part of, of a healing or healthy support for you. So there you go. It's just like taking a vitamin kind of thing. That's how it feels. So. so then what is astral projection? Is that actually different than remote viewing or astral traveling? So traveling is like going to, what about astral projection? She says, um, okay, so the definition she's giving me on this one is more of like a, with the intention to leave the planet, not like remote viewing where it's like looking here and seeing things here, even in timelines here that have happened in the past, you can do that or coming in the future, you can remote view to go past and future. But she says, astral projection is more of a, she says it's very high view. Okay, so remote viewing is more of kind of a human, you know, trying to understand what the brain, but astral projection is like this. She said you go up really high, basically, like really, 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 really high up, and then you kind of like a laser beam focus on something that, it's, it's like very specific, is what she's showing me. It's like very specific, very specific. You zoom in then. You go up really, really high, and then you zoom in. And so can we do this? She said it's about, it's about the different dimensions because you're trying to access a different dimension or a different level of reality. She said this is the same kind of thing that happens during um, like manifesting or law of attraction. Like which level is the actual experience on? And when you can project into that and see that, watch it, view it, feel it, experience it, sense it in some way, gain something from that, you can integrate it or incorporate it into your essence but it's not a, she's like, it's not a done deal. It doesn't necessarily mean that's, that's going to happen for you because it's already happening because it's a different level of reality. That is complicated and it's really gonna be hard to try to explain that deeper in this little video. So we're not gonna go super, super deep into that. All right, so Sylvia, wow, you've had great, um, do you guys get the infused knowledge and in the way that she's uh, sending information right now? It's not just this, she's talking and I'm listening to everything she says. I'm talking because of all the energy information that she's giving us and I'm trying to process it and have dialogue conversation with you while at the same time you are feeling this energy. So we've talked about psychic intervention, which is more about interference, I think. And... We've talked about remote viewing very specifically in our human lives. We've talked about um, how it can be good and how, how it can be not so helpful. We've also talked about astral travel and astral projection just a little bit. So is there anything else that I'm missing? She says, I think it's really important for people to understand that energy is changing fast. It's very, it's very rapid. She says, everything is rapid. And when it seems like things aren't moving, she says, there's so much happening. There's so much happening. So it might just be that your body needs to rest 
or be still so all this stuff can happen at these other levels so that when you are ready and able to adjust your frequency to that or to receive that particular idea, thought, action, understanding, knowing, wisdom, healing, you will be in a place, in a healthy place for your body to actually be able to use that and incorporate into your life now. So your body and your mind are the two biggest barriers or obstacles to you receiving psychic information, metaphysical information, and understanding for advanced healing. So it's just a respect for the human form, she says, for the human body. So that's what, that's what I like to say. And then she says to me, February, what is February? February is my birthday, February 2022. There's something up for February 2022. I'm not sure what that is. If you know Sylvia Brown and you know about her, maybe that's some kind of special date for her. Maybe that's some kind of special thing for her, her people, her community. I don't know. But she's showing me February 2022. There's something up with that. Maybe we'll have to have additional conversation about that. All right, so this is Bridget. I hope that I've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope. We have been chatting with Sylvia Brown in the afterlife. I hope you can feel her energy. Go ahead and put your comments below. I'm sure there'll be interesting, insightful conversation, as always. Make sure you subscribe to Above Life Channel and set your bell for notifications so you never miss a weekly channeling video. Weekly channeling videos come out on Mondays, so if you miss one or you're looking for some, check it out. There's also a playlist. Sylvia Brown, for example, has one. All right. Thanks for being here.